the snake. My mother sat on the creaky wood porch swing, clinking her vodka tonic in one hand, waving her other hand about, telling story after story. Everyone at the picnic gathered around her, nodding and leaning in. They weren't bored with her Wellesley College tales of sliding on trays in the snow or draining the spaghetti pot with her neck brace on because she got bucked off a horse at John Sloan's farm. John Sloan, the man she almost married, we heard that one a thousand times. How honeymooning mom and dad ran into John Sloan in the hotel elevator in Sea Island, Georgia, stumbling drunk in a white linen suit, he tried to follow them back to their hotel room. I watched as mom held court like Scarlett O'Hara in Gone with the Wind, surrounded by suitors at Twelve Oaks, batting her eyes, tipping her brunette head just so. She even said fiddle dee dee in the same affected in the same affected tone as Scarlett, so annoying to 12-year-old me. One step away from I do declare the worst of Southern cliches. <laughs> Mom laughed on that porch swing, redoing her orangey lipstick mid-sentence. Her captive audience waited through the pause in her story while she put the gold tube back in her madras shorts pocket. The night before the picnic, Mom was on her knees in her nightgown, digging through the overflowing linen closet for the yellow tablecloth that matched the yellow candles. Dad told her to call it a night for God's sake as he nursed his scotch and read his book in their four-poster bed, but Mom wouldn't listen. That morning, I helped her set up the buffet. I rolled each napkin, stuck a fork inside, and tied it with a ribbon. But Mom came behind me, shaking her head, and rearranging my napkin rolls on the silver platter. I asked her, why the guests just get a fork, not a spoon and a knife? She snapped, you know, silly girl, we only serve fork food at buffets. <laughs> After I did the forks, I peed in the downstairs bathroom and heard rattling outside the window. Standing on the toilet seat, I pulled the gingham curtain back and saw a rattlesnake outside shedding its silvery skin on the green grass. Mom, there's a rattlesnake. Get QZ inside, I hollered. She grabbed QZ by the collar and pulled him in the screen kitchen door. He barked and whimpered at the snake he couldn't get to. And Mom, your friends will be here soon. What do we do about the snake? They're not going to want to get out of their cars, I shrieked. She didn't answer. I heard her banging around in the tool shed. I wouldn't put my bare feet on the floor, even though the snake was outside. It gave me the willies. My mother marched across that lawn like a soldier, with dad's axe propped on her shoulder, jaw clenched, brows knit. Using her famous tennis swing, she wielded the axe up high and down, hacking that snake to bits. splattering blood on her tanned calves. <laughs> she called that snake a goddamn son of a bitch. <laughs> Under her breath. <laughs> the snake parts wiggled and the rattle still rattled. The lacy skin it had shed moments ago was flattened where mom stomped on it with her wedge-heeled espadrille. I had hoped to bring the snakeskin to science class and could have gotten extra credit, but now it was ruined. <laughs> Mom yelled, Courtney, get out here with a garbage bag and a hose and clean up this mess pronto. Take that bag down to the dock and throw it in the river, she said, quick, before my guests arrive. I didn't want to go near those wiggling dead snake parts, <laughs> but I was scared not to. What if mom decided to chop me up with that same ax? <laughs> mom wanted everything perfect for the picnic. She wanted everything perfect anyway. When I sprained my ankle on the soccer field, she didn't take me right to the doctor. She made me bathe and put on my good green corduroy jacket and skirt. <laughs> All for an x-ray. As I hobbled down the stairs, she gave me the once over, and she told me I better hold in my stomach when I wear that skirt. 
My mother, a fifth generation New Orleanian, got that square jaw and needle nose from Mama, and Mama got hers from her mother, and it just keeps going back, that Bartlett bloodline of aquiline noses and ironed blouses. Dad came from East Tennessee, and Mom glossed over this detail in introductory conversations. <laughs> so she could get right to the big stuff. That he went to Princeton and then Harvard Law School and she went to Wellesley College and Madeleine Albright was her classmate and Allie McGraw went there too and how people mixed up mom with Allie McGraw and how dad was one point away from being named a Rhodes Scholar. We know, we know. <laughs> she wore their colleges like military badges pinned to her chest in formation. Later, when I followed the wrong boyfriend to the wrong state school, I wondered how mom would maneuver through uptown New Orleans cocktail parties saddled with my subpar college credentials. <laughs> but when I left for France my junior year, she was relieved to say, Courtney's studying abroad. <laughs> abroad, mom loved the word abroad. Mom had to have learned somewhere that she better be perfect, but it surely wasn't from sweet Elnora with her wide smile and warm hugs. She said Elnora raised her. What with Mama running the junior league and Papa's law practice? Everybody had a maid, she quipped. That's how it was done back then. And it couldn't have been from Metairie Day School where we all went. Metairie Day was all kumbaya and macrame with the non-graded primary where we played in our loving. <laughs> I bet I could have found out all kinds of stuff from Mom's set of red diaries that she scribbled in after dinner and locked in the locked box under her bed. But when she got sick last Christmas, she made Dad promise to burn them in the fireplace. And of course, he did it that night. I won't ever know mom's handwritten secrets. Like the rattlesnake, she shed her old silvery skin forever.